We want to look at an, an interesting circuit, which is an op-amp circuit, and is actually sort of the typical difference amplifier that you get out of an op-amp circuit. So you get the sort of parallel R1s and the parallel R2s here. To actually look at what, what does this look like when the gain is not infinite. Okay, so I don't have the exact ideal part of the solution, but I have sort of a finite gain, and I want to kind, kind of look at what result I have. And hopefully this then gives me something that looks like the ideal solution. And if you're looking on the slide, you look all the way at the bottom of it, you kind of know it does. But let's take a look and see how we get there and see how we approach that. So what you can imagine here is, of course, we have the inverting amplifier structure, R1 to R2 to, to, to the output voltage. If I were to actually put the input directly into the plus terminal, remember that the gain I would get would then be R2 over R1 plus 1 in the ideal case. And so I need to do something to get these two to match. And what I'm doing there is basically by making a resistive voltage divider on the front end from V2 to this sort of intermediate node here. This actually allows it to balance out and I get a really typical differential approach. You go, great. So now I can sit there and take a look at the structure. I'm going to get very typical math to many other op-amp problems. I can actually take the structure and I can convert it down into this voltage controlled voltage source approach, which again, this sits right on the output voltage so I can see how all this is changing. I go minus a plus because this is actually sitting at the negative, on the negative terminal, this is the positive terminal. And we can work from there. Um, notice there is a resistive voltage divider. There's no current going in there because a classical op amp, there is no current. There's no current on the inputs. There's no current coming out of VX. So I basically am going to have a voltage divider here and then a KCL at VX. And I have one third equation, which is basically saying how does this VY minus VX, how does that end up relating to the output voltage? Well, that turns out to give me three equations. Here's the resistive voltage divider equation. Here's the KCL, which I can then take through a couple stages and reduce it to a slightly more interesting form, although interesting is the eye of the beholder, but we're going to use this in a moment. And then we're going to take the output voltage, and what we find in the output voltage is that it actually will be Vy minus Vx, and exactly as we would expect. So from these two terms, I can plug these into here. This requires a little bit of algebra to get to the result, but I get to this result underneath here. And then I also, on the other side, have V out over A sub V, which A sub V is huge, so I expect this is going to be the term that's going to be small. So I can then take R1 and R2 and multiply through this term by that, and then when I'm done with that term, then what I can end up doing through this whole structure is then saying, ah, okay, now I can kind of group the V out term. I get R2 over R1, which is still going to give me the V2, the V1. All of that comes from here. And what I notice is that I have R1 plus R2 over, over R1, and then over 1 over A sub V term, which is the gain term. So if it turns out that R2 over R1 you know, is less than 100, which means it's a moderate gain for the op amp, then this term here turns out to give you a number that's like maybe 0.1%. So 10 to the minus 3 or less. That's usually a term that's pretty negligible. In fact, if you're building it out of discrete components, you think, well, how many resist, what are my tolerance of resistors? Like 1%? We're not going to be too worried about these kinds of kind of behaviors. And so as a result, it's pretty much going to just be approximately R2 over R1, V2 minus V1, which is your ideal response. And so what's great is that we kind of know that this works. Now, on the other hand, if I tried to make a really high gain or had a really low gain op amp, I could talk about what those different issues would be and the different properties would be. So I could have great confidence when I sit down to look at my design to think, what do I need, how much, and I also have good confidence that generally the theory works, even to the point of if I put two resistors in, I would find I get a gain of minus 10. All of this works out fairly smoothly, even for what looks like a slightly more complex circuit. 